Hello, welcome everybody. Um, I do not need to introduce myself, I don't think. <laughs> or would you like to do that, Helen? Yeah, I'd love to do this for you, certainly. Okay, sure. Okay, so let me, uh, we don't need any specific introductions. Everybody knows our own Heike Philp, but just a few words so that um, I fill any gaps that um, you may have. Heike Philp is the CEO of Let's Talk Online, and she is an ed tech and immersive language education integration specialist. She has co-initiated four European funded projects on teaching and learning a language in real time at a distance, which is Lancelot, Avalon, Camelot, and the most recent one, Guinevere. Heike has founded and she organizes several web conferences, as you well know, uh, such as, for example, the Virtual Roundtable, the DAF Webcon for teachers of German, as a languages annual symposium, and she co-owns Education Islands on Second Life. Today, Heike is going to run through her countdown, countdown of the 13 3D environments that we examined recently in our EVO session. And she's going to come up, she's going to present the top five that um, our participants voted as most preferable. So over to you, Heike. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Oh, I give it a good start. Um, this is the EVO session as mentioned. It was a five week course. It was attended by 145. It wasn't a course, sorry. It's an EVO session, it's not a course. It was attended by 145 uh, participants and we had uh, a wonderful team of uh, educators. All of the results of this EVO session have been published on a wiki. Um, I will share, or uh, Helena can share the link for the wiki. Now, these are the moderators. Uh, we've had eight in our team this year. And uh, we talked earlier about Dennis, who is now well in his 80s, and he's been very active. So what we did is we created a rubric. What does that mean? We looked at different 3D environments, always with the thought of we would like to know well which one works for language teaching and learning and if so how long would it take to actually get familiar with it and is it now which one of the many out there vr and oh what else is there which one warrants my investment of time so that i could eventually then be able to teach uh, my students and we asked these questions. I'll let you read them for you uh, just a minute. And another list. And then we also got together in the end with Tricider to decide which ones of the solution we like best. That's as simple as that. And it took us four weeks, five weeks and 20 live sessions where we invited experts on certain 3D environments, for example, World of Warcraft, or we were looking for somebody for Fortnite. And then we heard of somebody, Immerse Online is a, is a solution. Created. So we wanted to look at different, and we made a list of our top, actually 19, top 19, 19 solutions we looked at, but uh, intensively we looked at 13. Um, the other five we wanted to look at, but weren't able to for certain reasons, and that's why they ended up at the top of the list. Uh, Suns are sold, high fidelity sold, uh, Facebook space only accessible with Oculus Rift, very expensive. Facebook Horizon, still not out. Fortnite, yeah, we wanted to find somebody, but nobody volunteered. And Mozilla Hubs, uh, we should have looked a little bit more at this one, but the graphics put me off a little bit. Uh, we looked at even some games. Um, this one is a, a beautiful um, 
a single player VR game, yeah, with a chatbot that answers questions, you know, asks you questions, wonderful. Um, and then FriendBase is an app, it's a mobile app, yeah, and so you can go to this little world and just chat with people, very good. But it doesn't have a good rating, why? Because there's also a lot of foul language, because it's open, quite open. Uh, Immerse Online is specifically designed for language teaching by a startup in America, and so it even has a curriculum. It has English content specifically designed for communication. But the interesting thing is, it doesn't have a voice chat. Outspace VR is wonderful, has voice, has everything, except for the static avatars. It's fantastic. We love it. Yeah. Um, lots of kids are talking about Fortnite. You're absolutely right, yeah? And uh, 270 million kids around the world are playing Fortnite, and that is almost the size of America. Next one, we went for VR chat, and I really recommend you to go in it if you have a VR headset. And it can be an Oculus Quest. Um, it doesn't work with the, the cardboard, but it's so much fun in this world. And the funny thing about it is that you can um, choose an avatar but simply by, if you see an avatar that looks funny or great and you like it, you click on that avatar. And if the person has enabled sharing of his avatar, then you can suddenly look like that person. So I, it man, I managed uh, to change from, from a, a big, huge, from a, from a hen to a frog to a medieval knight, to a, a, a monster, within a matter of minutes, you know, it, it's so much fun. And there's a lot of giggling and laughing in there. It's hilarious. They do karaoke online. It's, it's really nice. It's very nice. Science Space. Science Space is based on Unity. Unity is really, really good on VR, and mobile device, on iPad, on everything it runs, yeah? Um, but it you can't customize it when it's live. You can only customize it in the software Unity 3D prior to launching. So, but it's very, very good. And obviously all of the games are built on Unity. It's fantastic, very solid game engine. And Science Space has managed, Science Space, the founders of Science Space are the, found, the co-founding co members of uh, OpenSim. Um, they have, taken also it as far as that their Unity 3D has a plugin for OpenSim content. So if you work in OpenSim and you create a chair, then you can import this chair through that plugin into Unity in this environment. Very beautiful, very well done. They come out of beta in May and they promised a lot, lot new features and we're really looking forward to them coming out of beta. And Verbella is uh, made and designed for a mixture of university feeling with presentation style thingy, very slick, very smart, very expensive, but they have a free version that you can go to their, to their main site and so you can use a whiteboard, you can use a meeting room, all for free, but it's not private. Minecraft, now we're coming up to number six. Number six is already within our range of the first top five. And I will slow down a little bit here because it warrants a little bit more explanation. And I think Minecraft deserves it. And if you'd watched Van Steven's session, can you mute please? Thank you. And World of Warcraft was also demonstrated to us and it looks, you know, this looks horrible, doesn't it? A uh, kind of off-putting. And if you see the interface of World of Warcraft with these thousands and one buttons, it kind of turns you off to even go in there. However, we had somebody explain to us, and this is the latest version of, um, of uh, World of Warcraft, that there's a retro version of World of Warcraft <laughs> has now come out lately. And uh, it's very nice for role playing. And it's, there's lots of educators in World of Warcraft as well. So it landed on top number five. And then this one, I have to tell you about it. I find it absolutely adorable. It's uh, Cospaces runs on the tablet. It runs on the mobile. It runs on, on the PC. It runs everywhere. 
And I always thought it's a single player game because the cute animations, you know, this rocket launches and you can click on it and there can be some coding that where you program this. And then we found out that building in co-spaces can be done by several people together. But once the building is done, it will then become a single player game. And so what p kids have done, they've, uh, or a teacher in New Zealand has showed us, and the recordings are all on that wiki, is they built together a park with animals. Yeah, very cute. And then they copied the park and changed it a tiny little bit. They deleted a tree or the, the bench was blue instead of red and so, and then they played uh, spot the difference games. <laughs> How cute is that? <laughs> awesome. So very nice. And also it works on Merge Cube. It works on, um, but it's the paid version that works on Merge Cube. And the free version, a teacher can have a free version of CoSpaces with up to 29 students. Yeah. And it's so flexible that you can import any possible mesh object out there, which is means that you have an endless supply of 3D objects that you can import in here and manipulate in here. So, so build is wonderful. So, and Second Life was number three on our list. We love it. And uh, we, you will hear more about it by Pathfinder's Lester's tour. Now this one is we adore as well. And Annalisa said she also tried it. Um, it's AW3DU weird name but uh, active worlds he used to be and uh, Godholm showed us this one and he spent about 10 years in uh, active worlds building uh, an environment to learn French and the beautiful thing is about active worlds that all of the objects that you can find are also shared by tons of educators so there's no shortage of objects if you want a cow because you have to illustrate animals you know a cow a dog and a hen and what have you you could just raise that from an inventory and then the beautiful thing about active world is that it also is uh, very good with text uh, any descriptions of objects or placing billboards with descriptions and uh, so very good with text-based environment which is for language learning absolutely ideal yeah so it's objects and get and then students can create at ease they can just click and boom and then they start creating um, and students create whole um, villages of their aboriginals i don't know what you know the original american so some traditional cultural heritage and so on fantastic yeah why was that not number one though because we love it and it's very easy to use it's very easy to use. It's dead easy. Ask Annalisa. And the reason it's not number one is because Active Worlds is a private company. If that private company folds, everything is gone. Absolutely everything. And we experienced that with Google Lively, we've experienced that with Google Plus communities, we've experienced that no end of times that companies, no matter how big they are, decided to just withdraw a product, no matter the consequences, yeah? So we didn't want to invest our time and effort to learn, to build, build community, get students in for something that might I mean, Active Worlds has been around a long, long time. There's no reason to assume that they would in any way go down, but it's still, it's a private company. So the alternative is, and please have a guess, what is our number one? <laughs> Can you write this down in text chat? And which is our number one solution? <laughs> I gave out the spoiler, yeah. <laughs> I just want to see whether you're attentive, everyone. Yeah, you're falling asleep already. <laughs> That's all. It wasn't a test question. It was a test question whether you are alive and kicking. 
<laughs> so here we go. And I'm showing you the tri cider results and also give you this link, uh, uh, Helena, if you can pick that from the wiki. This is the link to look at it. And we voted how open sim and why it's the number one. And I tell you why why we chosen it open sim. Because open sim is open source. And so whatever you build in open sim, well, if that provider who provides OpenSIM, and there are many, there's Craft, there's Kitely, there's um, Hi uh, open, open Simulator thing, um, there's uh, JJ Cobb, what's her name? Uh, her J. Cobb, whatever her word, yeah, uh, and so forth. So there are many providers for OpenSIM, but if, say, for example, Kitely disappears, we can take all of this with a click of the button and export every single object as an OAR out of Second Life and import it into the next OpenSIM provider's bit. So nothing gets lost. And Second Life refused for many, many years people to export stuff and many built entire cities in Second Life. And as soon as it came to how can I maintain this kind of digital asset? Uh, well, if you don't pay your SIM dues, you know, you lose it all. I'm sorry in Second Life. What the amount of stuff that got lost through that in Second Life. In Second Life, an island costs 150 US dollars a month for one island, one SIM. And thankfully, we have a community to help to pay towards that. And in uh, OpenSIM, you can get four regions for 20 US dollars, or you can start at 10 US dollars. I think Helena pays 10 US dollars a month for, for what she has, or 15, 15 US dollars a month for a complete region, 14, look at that, for a complete area where she can get her students in, build as she pleases. Uh, the four regions, aren't they? Four regions are like the size of Sims. Yeah, and so OpenSIM is um, a it's safe to build there. <laughs> then you can close an OpenSIM to the outside world. This is what's called you stop hypergridding. Yeah, I'm over my time. I'm sorry, I'll finish soon. So it's uh, I won't go on about it. <laughs> but this is our recommendation after five weeks of Evo session. And uh, here is the wiki with all of the results of the 20 live sessions. Uh, this is the logo on the top right hand side, our immersive language education logo. And here, this is us. Thank you very much for listening. Um, thank you very much, Heike. Thanks for making this a reality, really, and <clears throat> materializing it. It's very important for colleagues to know what's out there for their students and um, uh, you've been very dynamic in sort of coordinating all this thank you lovely